Jalen, the update on this is that the fan that threw the popcorn on Westbrook has been banned indefinitely from the Wells Fargo Center and had their season tickets revoked. What do you think about the incident and the ensuing punishment? I think I need a stronger punishment and I need more ownership. You said ban from the Wells Fargo Arena. I think that fan should be banned from all NBA sanctioned events. You said season ticket revolt indefinitely. They should not be able to attend NBA functions in perpetuity. Oh, and by the way, since, is this, since this is a season ticket holder, they clearly know who it is. Mm -hmm. And so you know what else I would like them to do? Reveal who he is and acknowledge this person who not only threw the popcorn, but also why he got banned is what the term should be. Now, for this behavior, so many times, you heard Kyrie Irving allude to it, getting ready for what may happen in Boston. We've seen incidents time and time again, including involving Russell Westbrook, where yep. he hears names or curse words or racist things being said to him. Now, buying a ticket does not give you the license to throw the bird up at Russell Westbrook. Now, the NBA fan experience is the absolute best in sports. You just saw that four fan standing on the court. You see people sitting courtside. That isn't happening at baseball games and at NFL games. This is why the fan experience has elevated the sport, the popularity of the players, whether you talk endorsements or salaries or even social media. The NBA fan experience is outstanding, and I don't want to paint a broad stroke that all fans behave like this. However, when some fan does behave like this, I need to see a stronger punishment. That's what I would like to have happen by the NBA. Because, as you mentioned, NBA fans are so close to the action, and I've been lucky enough to sit courtside at a couple games in my life, there is an unwritten social contract that you sign when you are that close to the action, and that is simply be responsible. Don't be a child. Be mature. It's one thing to boo and jeer the opposing team, but when you get physical, when you pour popcorn on somebody, and you see all these incidents involving Russell Westbrook and fans, every single time, it is never, ever, ever Russell Westbrook's fault. These fans are taking it way too far. And one thing I do want to mention is a lot of people are sort of pointing at the Philly aspect of this. This is not a Philadelphia problem. That is, it is that man's problem whose identity will come out, but it's definitely that man's problem. But Jalen, a question for you. Why why do you think all these incidents, it seems like a lot of this happens to Russell Westbrook often. What do you think the targeting of Westbrook is like? Well, he's a polarizing player for a lot of people because he doesn't fit a one-size-fit-all model. He averaged a triple-double for the fourth time, and he's not considered cute and cuddly. He's not smiling all of the time. He's not doing every interview. And Jacoby, I had that happen to me before. Leaving really? MSG, a fan literally, as you see the red overpass, that doesn't exist or didn't exist at MSG in the late 90s. I had a fan literally throw a towel straight in my face. And so I tried to jump up there and grab the fan and snatch the fan down. And I would not have cared what would have happened once that fan hit the ground. And so, it's unfortunate that these instances constantly involve someone that looks like you opposing someone that looks like me while I'm at work. And that's why it's important that we respect one another and buying a ticket doesn't allow you to disrespect the player. Two things, number one, the only reason you never pulled that fan down in Madison Square Garden is because you can't jump. You couldn't jump up and grab him. <laughs> and number two is, when you said nothing should be per thrown at a performer, you've obviously never seen my stand-up career. Moving on to the other game we haven't discussed yet, and that is a much-needed win for the Jazz in Utah against the Grizzlies. John ja Morant did his thing, but it was a team effort from Donovan Mitchell and company to get a much-needed win to even the series at 1-1. What was the key to the Jazz, the jazz. performance? We got the jazz. Weren't they conducting themselves like an orchestra? They had their conductor back in Donovan Mitchell. 
and all of a sudden their offense was firing on all cylinders. Playoff highs and points and made threes and everybody knocking down shots and Mike Conley triple double getting numbers. Six man of the year, Jordan Clarkson continuing to attack Rudy Gobert scoring the basketball. This is why the Utah Jazz have been the best team in basketball the entire season. Yeah, I mean, this is the formula for a Jazz victory. Seven Jazz players in double figures. Contributions from everybody. The other side of the ball, you have John ja Morant. John ja Morant scored how many points, Jalen Rose? How many points did John ja Morant score? Seven. And as a matter of one fact. basketball game. I mean, he is a superstar in the making. But when you look at the other side of the ball, you've got seven players in double figures. And because of foul trouble and other reasons, John ja Morant just didn't have enough help to get over the hump. But I'm excited to watch this series as I think it'll be much closer than normal 1-8 series are.